Today you'll see two jackets, they're super modern. There's a lot of features that you can either sew in or leave out. The fit is amazing, there's cup sizes. Both of them are linen, one is navy, one is an amazing print. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing. I'm here to share all about the Delaware jacket from Inch to Stitch. This has been in the works for a while. It did take me quite a while to materialize them, not because they had to sew, it's just because I couldn't make up my mind on the fabric choice. The style is amazing and as usual the fit is great. It's a woven jacket and there's cup sizes so that is always amazing. There is a bustard which is golden. I love a bustard. I have been known to add bustards onto jackets. This time I don't need to add one because it's already there and depending on the cup size that you choose for yourself, how big that dart is going to be and it's going to give you that really nice smooth shaping on the side. It's a semi-fitted jacket so it's not boxy, it's not oversized, it's not tight either, it's just, just perfect. It's got a really easy to sew stand up collar there, a zipper front. There's patch pockets on the front with flaps. You can either do them or not, they are totally optional. I've done some of them. And for shaping at the waist, there's a casing that goes sewn onto the inside of the jacket. It can also be sewn onto the outside of the jacket. Little buttonhole there for you to put your drawstring. And then you can either do a knot or use those little adapter thingies so you can make it tighter or looser. The front is just one piece, the back is one piece on the fold. The sleeves have two pieces, there's a seam on the back there that finishes in a vent with a cuff. It's a really nice technique that you would have already seen how to sew because I made it into a standalone video. That type of sleeve you'll find it in a lot of patterns, in a lot of styles. And the technique to sew it together is pretty much the same. So you have already seen how to do that. Because the Delaware jacket is brand new at each to stitch, it'll be 20% off through next Wednesday, the 6th of March. Nice little discount on the release week, so make sure you don't miss out if you're interested in a style like this. It's for sure a project that's worth tackling that is not as hard as you think it is. You'll see it in the sewing segment in a little bit. So just challenge yourself and get something done like this and you'll become really hooked on sewing jackets. It's so worth sewing and it's a great achievement if you've never made one before. If you want to support my work here on YouTube, please use my affiliate link to buy your pattern. It doesn't cost you anything extra. I just receive a small commission back. And that's one of the ways you can support what I do over here. I do my very, very best to give you really, really helpful content. And it's a lot of work, believe me. <laughs> so if you are in any way appreciative and what I do is helpful for you, using my link is one way that you can support that. So thank you very much if you do use it. Find my affiliate link in the description box and also in the pinned comment so it's easy to find. For fabric, you need medium to heavyweight woven fabric. It's not designed for neat fabric. Structure would be really easy to work with, like a cotton, a linen, a linen rayon blend, a cotton canvas, a cotton twill. Those be easy to press so and everything would be beautiful if you wanted to use something with a little bit of drape you could use a tensile twill maybe or a wool suiting but drape is not required here at all i would suggest if you're newer to sewing just use something that's easy to work with and you'll be okay you'll have a great time pinning sewing and pressing cutting marking everything's going to be good i've chosen linen for both of mine my navy one is 100 percent linen that's the one i made first the second one is a linen rayon blend they are both very nice and structured easy to work with the linen is a little light lighter weight than the printed version and I'm just so happy with them. Extra things you might need are fusible stay tape to stabilize the center area for the zipper. Uh, maybe you want to source your own drawstring or maybe you can make it yourself if you want to instead of buttonholes for the casing you could do grommets. I've just kept it simple and done buttonholes myself. I'd rather leave the grommets for visible areas of garments and then of course you need a separating zipper depending on the size you're making it can be from 19 to 23 inches long. I don't really mind I just look at the pattern piece and just grab a zipper and I really hope I have one that's longer because I find it so much easier to just trim away to the length that I need. Sizing goes from double zero to 40 US that goes up to a 62 inch hip and you have your cup sizes from A through to double D. There's a little chart where you can see what sewing cup size you are. You basically measure your high bust circumference and your full bust circumference see the difference there. 
I have a three inch difference and that stays pretty much consistent whether I gain or lose weight. So just make sure you measure yourself and figure out what your sewing cup size is. It's not the same as what you wear with your bra and you'll be fine. You have a nice bust out there that is going to accommodate that projection that we have here on the front. So this is amazing. I love that. <laughs> and then as I mentioned, this is semi-fitted. So at the bust, you're going to have around four inches of ease, extra space for you to wear a layer underneath. Maybe if you want to make this in a wool suiting and you want to wear this in the winter with a huge sweater underneath, maybe size up. Pretty much straight going down. Remember, we're going to get all this shaping from the casing and the drawstring inside. So at the waist, you have about 10 extra inches. And then going down the hips, you have around four inches of space as well. So it's very good. You get detailed finished length measurements on the finished measurements chart. The bicep measurement is there as well if it's something that you need to check. I made a size 14 with a C cup. That's what I did up to my waist. And then from the waist down, I blended out to a size 16 at the hip, which is what matches my current measurements right now. So I'm very happy with that. The body in the jacket itself, I didn't adjust. I didn't make any longer. I like the length that it has there. <laughs> But for the sleeves, I did make the sleeves one inch longer because I just have longer arms and I wanted the cuffs to reach below my little wrist bone right here. That's how I like my sleeves to be. So one inch was going to be okay. I know if I had not added length, I would have felt like I'm missing a little bit of length right there. For bust studs on garments, sometimes I've had to change the position of them. Now, I don't know if I have a better bra than I had before, but I measured my, myself my bust height with my pretty bra. And then the pattern, and I realized I didn't really need to change that position. I didn't need to raise or lower that bust It was perfectly placed for me, for my cup size. So that was great. <laughs> I did check that before sewing. I didn't make a test garment. I went straight for my 100% linen. That's how much I trust Kenneth and her drafting. So yeah, that, that goes to show. <laughs> I did film quite a lot of the sewing process. You have already seen how to put together the sleeve. That is a standalone technique video that I posted before posting this one. So you'll find this type of sleeve in so many patterns, so many brands, denim jackets, body type jackets. A lot of them have this type of sleeve. Check out how to sew the sleeve there. So here we're going to see general construction, the collar, the zipper, all of that good stuff. You'll see it's a pretty easy jacket to put together considering that there's other ones that have much more complexity. There's no lining here. There's no princess seams. You see, it's going to be good. Now for my navy jacket, I went above and beyond and I just decided to bind the seams just because I used one of my son's older little shirts that I keep for that because it's just one way to reuse a shirt. It's like a memory binding. I always remember. So I'll see that reminder of him when he was little inside my jacket. So let's see how to put the Delaware together. These are the pattern pieces for the Delaware jacket from each stitch. Linen rayon blend with a grey type of animal print there. I really like it. The back is simple. It's cut on the fold. The front is just one piece. There is a bust start there. It's different according to your cup size. I'm sewing a C cup size. This long piece that we see right here is going to be a casing that will be sewn onto the wrong side of the jacket later on. It can also be sewn onto the right side if you want. On the ends, there's going to be a little buttonhole for you to pull your drawstring through. I do like how the casing looks like on the inside, so I'm going to do that option. That rectangle that you see over there is the collar. There are two layers here. One is interfaced one isn't. That's my zipper. It's longer than what I need. I'm going to have to trim and remove some teeth up there on the top. Here are the sleeve pieces. It's a two-piece sleeve, upper sleeve, under sleeve. You can see an excess of seam allowance in the bottom sections and that's because there's going to be a little vent right there. And we also have cuffs. We need, we, they, they are rectangles as well and there's two pairs, two that are interfaced, two that aren't because for these cuffs one layer is going to be interfaced, one isn't. I am going to be putting some pockets on the hip. There are other pocket pieces that you can use as well and I'll show you those next because I'm going to use more pockets with my navy version. This is one chest pocket, you can do two if you want. These are the flaps, the layer on the top is the linen interfaced layer and the layer on the bottom I'm doing it in a matching cotton just to save fabric from the linen because I was squeezing every last little bit and the hip pockets are just slightly bigger but it's the same concept for both for all of the pockets I have interfaced the top there are marks there to do that so that when you fold this in the top of the pocket is more stable 
So I've done that with all the pockets. I'm going to go over some basic construction that we do always with anything. And the first step is always to stay stitch the necklines over there. The two front necklines, one back because it's on the fold. Always start from the shoulder into the center. It's a regular straight stitch, smaller than the seam allowance. Same as the back, from the shoulder into the center, flipping the fabric from the other shoulder into the center. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and sew a basta to get that out of the way, press the volume down. And then for this specific construction of this jacket, the shoulder seams are gonna be done later. What we are gonna do is serge the side seams, serge the shoulder seams all separately so that that's all ready to go. The way that this is made, because there's a casing on the inside that goes through the whole jacket, is that we sew the side seams first and then we can extend the whole jacket and sew in the casing. That gives you better access. And then once that's done, then we sew the shoulder seams. I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare the casing. In the instructions it says that you can fold one long end into the center and then the other long end into the center like this and in the end it's going to end up being one inch wide once all the folds are done. You could do that manually of course but I have actually measured this and it's two inches here which fits perfectly into my bias tape maker. Now this is cut on the straight of grain, this is not on the bias, but this gadget is gonna work just as well to get those two folds with minimal effort and no burning of fingers and no effort, you can see. So I'm gonna push all of this through and then my casing will be done. At the ends here, I'm gonna fuse a little bit of interfacing because there's a buttonhole mark on the pattern piece. This is the wrong side of my linen jacket. I bound the seams, I had a lot of fun doing that. I have my bust that, I had to sew that bust that before binding this side seam from the front and then the first step for this jacket is actually the side seams but leaving the shoulder seams free like that that allows you to extend all of this open like this and put the casing on the inside you're just going to have better access so on the pattern piece you can have these little marks on the front and the back pieces i mark those with chalk and they matched right there at the side seams and then I have my casing basted on top. If I move this out of the way, you might see the faint chalk marks there. I had the two little lines perfectly visible to me. I made the casing from a cotton. The casing is not made out of linen, it's a matching fabric, and it's one way I could save on the 100% linen fabric right here. But you can see that the casing reaches all the way up to the center front, and on the pattern piece for this casing, there's a mark for the buttonhole. So I've done the buttonhole there where the drawstring is gonna come out of. That buttonhole has to be done before you sew in the casing. There are optional chest pockets you can do as well. My fabric just allowed me to cut one chest pocket and with red I also mark the pocket for the other side. So now it's just a matter of top stitching that down right there on the edge and that will finish this part of the construction which has gone by pretty quickly. I'm going to use my blind hand presser foot with a needle to the left to edge stitch really neatly and I'm doing it from the wrong side obviously so I can see my drawstring casing and at some point I am going to go over the side seam a little bulkier here because I decided to bind mine. Before sewing this, I double check, triple check that my casing is totally symmetrical with the other side so that they're at the same level. Then we do shoulder seams over here. Seam allowance for this pattern is half an inch, which is perfect because it gives you a little bit more space further away from the bound edge. It looks so pretty and whatever extra time this took, I think is totally worth it. I don't do it with every project, but I felt like doing it this time. This is one of my son's old shirts when he was little. I always remember that and it will just have something personal in there. Another step I finished was to bind the bottom. I did that with navy because I don't want that to be seen when I move around. So I don't want to serge it either because I have already bound everything else. So I think that's going to be pretty discreet. I'm basting on my zipper. Most zipper installations are the same. Sometimes there's a few little differences. And one of those is that there is a mark on the pattern up to where the zipper should reach. So it, once you fold the hem, that's one inch, your zipper is not going to go all the way down, which I guess is a, an aesthetic choice, a style choice, because it could go all the way down if you wanted. So there's a little mark right there. So that's where I started pinning and then basting. And then at some point, you're going to go past that casing for the drawstring. There's a little button hole there. To make sure the casing ends up at the same level on the other side, I made two little marks there and two little marks there. So when I pin the other side, this stitching ends up at the same level and not one higher than the other. That's super important. 
And then when you get to the top, you need to make a mark five eighths of an inch from below this edge. And that's where your last zipper tooth should be. My zipper is extra long, so I'm actually gonna trim off up to there the zipper tape and get rid of some teeth so that I can have the teeth up to that mark there. I never separate my zipper, I always keep it together. And now that I have this side sewn on, I'm gonna bring my other side. I have my jacket wrong sides out and I'm going to align this casing to these marks here first to make sure they're at the same place. You can see that and the marks there. I'm gonna pin that first and then I'm gonna pin and base the rest from the bottom, from the bottom up to the top. I have cut away my excess length and trimmed away some teeth. You can see my mark here, that's where I want my teeth to be, so that's where they are. Remember, if you're going to trim, make sure you pull this down so that you don't cut and leave that up there because it's really hard to put that back in. Now that I know that this section matches, the top and the bottom matches, then I'm going to just go ahead and sew it. This edge of the presser foot for the zipper is going to go against the edge of the teeth right there. From the middle of the teeth that way, that ends up being about a quarter of an inch, which is what you want. I'm gonna push this back up out of the way. It's so much easier when you've hand basted it. There's no pins, everything's gonna match. It literally takes two minutes to hand baste and it makes all the difference. Once the zipper is sewn on both sides, I was able to separate it. Now, if you wanted to leave it just like this, it is acceptable. You just top stitch it on this side and this is a clean finish. And this is clean. You would have had to serge this center front beforehand before sewing in the zipper. So that's something that you should do first. I didn't do that because I planned on wrapping this around with some bias tape. So that's gonna give me a neat finish that is an alternative, like an option. If you were just doing the serged edge right here, this bottom bit would be serged. Once the zipper is flipped open, then you would fold up your hem allowance like this, which is one inch. That would be finished that would be top stitched and that's how your zipper is going to end up looking from the right side. I'm going to be wrapping the whole thing with bias tape. What I have here are the two pieces together, right sides together over here. The one underneath is not interfaced, the one on the top is interfaced. I'm going to be sewing this on the reverse which means that the top stitching at the end is going to be done on the interface side, the visible side. So that's why I have the interfacing side folded up like this by half an inch. Both were cut from the same pattern piece so they are exactly the same size. We're going to sew the short end, the long end and the short ends. It's a rectangle and we're going to keep that fold that we've just pressed right there where it is. I have it pinned. So let's quickly just sew this. You'll see that when I get to corners, I don't pivot my needle and move the fabric. I finish the seam all the way to the edge and then start again because I get a really nice intersection of seams there. This is the easiest color you could sew because the shape is a rectangle. It means it's going to stand up quite nicely and it's just easier to sew compared to other collar pieces that have curves in them. Now to flip it right sides out, I'm going to fold the seam allowances onto themselves at these intersections. I'm going to fold the seam allowance towards the non-interface side right here. So just like that and like that. Hold it nice and firmly, put your hand inside your fingers, hold the seam allowances and flip it and you always get a really nice point right there. Look at that nice point and you don't need to trim or use tools or do anything fancy here to get a nice neat result. Now I'm gonna head over to the iron, press the seam open in here, kneaden all of this up, and then we'll be able to sew this to the neckline. Because I'm sewing the collar on reverse, I'm gonna take my collar piece, which is the non-interface side that is extended. I have a mark on the center back. Then I'm gonna match with the pin at the center back of the neckline. When you look at this, we have right side of collar to wrong side of garment, and it will make sense eventually. It's just the way I find it easier to sew. Further to the sides, we have marks that will match the shoulder seams along the neckline. This is why stay stitching in the beginning was so important, so that this rounded area doesn't stretch out. And then as we get to the zipper area, we're going to align this fold. As we get to this finalized zipper area, we're going to get this fold and align it there, right there on the edge, so they're both at the same level. Remember we had an we, remember we have a next remember we have a distance there without zipper teeth so the teeth are not going to get in the way of sewing the collar and the collar is going to end up fairly close to that first tooth that you have there it's going to look neat when it's done so after pinning the reference points i'm going to pin everything that's in between everything matches one to one so it's all going to be good sewing this is super easy just make sure you get that loose bit of the collar out of the way so you don't catch it and you're just catching the non-interface collar 
when I start there at the end I'm careful because I've got a little bit of extra bulk because there's some zipper teeth there and I'm trying to sew right next to that fold. See my allowance here is half an inch and just go slowly. Remember your neckline is curved but your collar is a rectangle so you do need to make sure everything conforms. You don't get any pleats and puckers underneath so I go slowly and I touch with my fingers underneath that everything is going to turn out super smooth. I have already been to the iron and done some steps. The seam allowance there was half an inch so I trimmed that to half and I snipped all the way along that curved neckline so the seam allowance can release that tension. And then we have that seam that united the non-interface collar with the interface collar there oppressed. And this previously folded edge is going to come over now and cover that seam that we've done. This is the right side of the garment and this is where we're going to top stitch. Over here on the corners, we're just going to tuck away all that seam allowance from the zipper underneath and it's going to turn out super neat and we're going to top stitch from there. This is the easiest way because when you're top stitching, you can worry about doing it as neatly and as straight as possible. But you don't have to worry because the back part of the collar has already been sewn so you don't have to worry about not catching it like with a traditional method. For edge stitching, for a long time I've been using this presser foot that is a blind hand presser foot with the needle to the left and I would get the needle in there and then that would give me a really nice edge stitch but this is not working well, it's a little bit broken so I'm going to use something else. This is another presser foot, this has an L on it, it's also a type of blind hand presser foot but different. When you move this, it moves this edge in or out so you can actually get whatever seam allowance you want and it's really helpful. I've set it here to about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to be top stitching all along the collar including the top area so it's sort of like top stitching a rectangle and I'm using the presser foot that I've just shown you to get a really neat result. Just pivoting carefully when you get to corners as there's extra seam allowance there and a little bit extra bulk. My machine has no trouble right here. This is my navy version. As I look at it, it's getting more crumpled. <laughs> this is the collar, it's a rectangle. It was super easy to sew, as you saw. You know, I like sewing my things on the reverse, so I sewed it onto the wrong side of the jacket, and then the final top stitch is done here on the right side. I think that always works really well. For this one, I have a bust out here on one side that you can see, but on the other side, it's covered with a patch pocket. I was using every last little bit because you'll see later on that I use the same linen to make another garment, you'll see that next week. So I was really, really trying hard. So I decided to do only one patch pocket on the chest and one chest flap there. I put a button there for decoration. Underneath I used cotton for that layer that's not seen to save fabric again. And I didn't do a buttonhole, I just have it for decoration there. It's really nice, well positioned. I didn't need to make any changes to the height of this basta, it's perfectly placed for me. And then we go down below where we have that casing on the inside. Again, I did the casing with the cotton inside to save fabric. Here's my son's little shirt converted into bias tape where I bound everything. That was super fun. It did derail the time frame I had allocated to sewing this project. I planned my days to the minute, literally, and because I decided to bind, I lost a whole bunch of hours. So yeah, it, it put me behind, but that's okay. I would never regret doing this because it just looks so, so pretty on the inside. I really enjoyed doing that. And I just did a simple buttonhole over here. And this is a drawstring I found from one of my son's hoodies. I'll probably replace it later for something navy. That's what I found right now. And I have that little adapting thingy that you use to make it tighter or looser. <laughs> I don't know what they call it. On the hip area, I have pockets on both sides with the flaps. They are very neat. I have shown you so many patch pockets before. I will link to a video that shows a lot about patch pockets. So you can see, but they're, they're just rectangles that you sew on basically, and the edges are surged inside. Very nice. The back is super simple. There's no yoke, nothing like that. It's just one piece, and the casing is on the inside. I personally like the casing on the inside much more than the casing on the outside. I have sewn garments with the casing on the outside. I've done everything at this point and over time you realize things you like better than others and I really do like that casing on the inside. It looks so neat. You can see the top stitching there a little bit but it's just so nice to have this hidden and then I don't feel really pressured into having the drawstring being in the same material. I can use something else so I really prefer it that way. 
This is the two-piece sleeve. I did top stitch that long seam over here. Here is the vent, my button, my cuff. It's all very nice. And this is just a dream jacket. I love it so much. And look, if it crumples, it crumples. It's 100% linen. What are you gonna do? It's a chic type of crumpling in my opinion because people that do know fabric won't ever criticize someone wearing a crumpled linen garment because they know the quality and you know, you just know, okay? So anyone that wants to critique wrinkled linen fabric, you just don't know. <laughs> So yeah, let's see this one on. I think I've styled it three or four ways for you to see. This is my Delaware jacket from Each to Stitch in 100% linen. I love this color. I saw it a size 14 at the bust, blended to a 16 at the hip. I have a C cup option here, which fits me beautifully. The only fitting adjustment I did was to add one inch of length to the sleeves. Later on, you'll see that there's a bust that there that I didn't need to move anywhere. It was correctly placed for me. I've styled it here with a very old dress I made a couple of years ago from Each to Stitch called Isidro Top. I just lengthened to a dress. I've also that you can see that there's shaping at the waist with a casing, drawstring inside. I have put patch pockets on the hips and on the chest and some flaps. These are optional features. I did go many extra miles inside and I bound the seams. My casing is made with blue cotton so I could save on the 100% linen fabric. The sleeves are a two-piece sleeve with a vent and a cuff, very neat there. These techniques are super enjoyable when you're using linens, just so easy to work with. And we have a beautiful stand-up collar there. The sleeve and shoulder fit is perfect on the top. The back is simple, there's no yoke, nothing like that. It's a pretty easy zipper to set in there, I really like it. There you can see my flaps with the chest pocket up closer. I have just sewn the buttons through, I didn't make any buttonholes here just because I know I'm not going to use the buttonholes. There you can see that I did cover my zipper tape with some linen tape that I made. I'm showing this in a separate technique on my channel. Such a beautiful jacket, it goes beautifully over this printed dress with a navy background. This is an outfit I would definitely wear tomorrow if I had the chance. I can't wait to actually wear it out just like this. All the effort it took to bind the seams inside, it's all worth it for a jacket that's going to be a staple like this and it will just improve the longevity and well actually enjoyment of sewing that binding was pretty enjoyable and I'm gonna love looking at that binding when I wear this beautiful beautiful jacket. Let's see it styled other ways as well. This could be a perfect autumn outfit look for me with my red Aurora dress underneath, the booties and everything. Navy and red is a classic color combo that I always like. I've pulled out one of my colorful scarves to bring a little extra life and pizzazz into the outfit and I love this. Sheath dress under this type of jacket is perfect. This is not a boxy jacket. It's semi-fitted, there's as much shaping as you want on the waist with a drawstring. So I think it goes beautifully over a sheath dress like this and I'm very happy with the look right here. Definitely this is an outfit I'm going to wear when it's the appropriate weather to wear something like this. Love it. Now let's go a lot more casual. <laughs> this is a very old ready to wear dress I thrifted. It's actually a gap dress I bought many years ago and it's perfect condition. I've got some really fun sneakers with a printed canvas that matches the bag that I have right here. Brazilian brands are amazing. They do these types of designs and I love the shoes and the bags here. You can see that the dress is simple. It does have some waist shaping with a casing in there but it's still super loose and comfy to wear. I think the tones of blue match beautifully here. It's a type of bluish gray, the dress, and I love this. Very casual, but also looks like I made a little bit of an effort, especially with that matching scarf. Definitely a one way this jacket is gonna fit right into my wardrobe here, and I absolutely love this look here. Here is another casual outfit. I have my pull-on Mountain View jeans from Each to Stitch that I wear all the time. They're so comfortable, straight leg, pretty classic style. I have some really walkable heels. Now the cami I have underneath is made out of rayon. It's super flowy. It's actually oversized and pretty shapeless. But because the jacket has shaping, I don't feel I'm too boxy here. You can see all that ease that the cami has, but the jacket gives it the shaping that you need for the overall look. So this is definitely a nice little casual outfit as well. And this jacket can be worn so many ways. It was just such a great pattern to sew up and it's not as difficult as you think it is. It's actually much easier than you think it is.
My second version is a little more simplified than my first. One, because the print allowed it. <laughs> this is a fabric I've used before to make a skirt. I would never wear all of this together. I mean, animal print from head to toe, no thank you but I love the fabric, so I don't mind wearing them as separates. Everything's the same. I did film quite a lot of the sewing process here. Up close, you can see that I've used bias tape to cover the zipper tape right there. That's a really, really nice technique, and I think it's worth taking a few extra minutes doing. I am preparing a different video that's gonna show this technique two ways, how you can cover that zipper tape. There's many ways you can do things, so I like preparing them where you can see more than one way so that you can choose what you prefer best. Because you really wouldn't see much of the details with a print. I just put on patch pockets on the hips, but no pocket flap. It's just basically rectangle sewn on there. I could put little gadgets and things in there if I wanted to. I could have left the jacket with nothing, but I did have enough fabric to cut those little rectangles, so why not? I wouldn't just want to leave it with anything for no justification, you know? If I really didn't have fabric, then I wouldn't have put pockets, but I did, so no chest pockets, just Pockets over here. The casing is done with the same linen fabric. I found this little drawstring in my stash. And because everything is just surged inside, it was so fast. It didn't take as long as the other one. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed making this one. And it's amazing. I really, really like it. And let's see it styled a few ways as well. This is my second Delaware jacket. Same sizing as the previous navy one, size 14, blended to 16 hips with a C cup, one inch extra length to the sleeve. Because this is a print, it's simplified in a few ways, but not in that many ways. The beautiful tones of the gray leopard print are just amazing. I think it goes really well over this fitted black dress. This is one way I would dress up this jacket and it just works beautifully. This one has the casing done with the same linen fabric. I only have some pockets on the hip. Those pockets are barely visible, but I do have them there and I don't have the flaps for the pockets. I think you have to choose really well how much detail you wanna do when you use a print like this. I kept the details more minimal. The collar is beautiful, the zipper as well. It's all really good, it's all the same. It's just that this is a print, so obviously you can't see most of the features like the seam on the back of the two-piece sleeve. And I love how that stand-up collar lies there so nicely. It's interfaced inside and it's really easy to sew. Here I've also covered the zipper tape with another technique that I used with the navy version. And it's beautiful. It looks beautiful closed up or zipped up or unzipped. It's just so good. It's the perfect balance of ease. It not being oversized, it's not being fitted. It's just the perfect amount of ease to fit a lovely dress like this underneath. Here's something a little more casual for a spring day where it's a little bit chilly where you might need a jacket. So I do have sandals, <laughs> I do have a white denim skirt and a black cami. I think what's underneath is quite basic because the jacket is a star here. The leopard print in the grey tones also has some white and some black in there so I think this works really beautifully. And this is a great little casual outfit I know I'm going to really enjoy wearing. Everything really basic here. I'm just letting the jacket do all the work in the look here. It's really, really beautiful. I like this length. I am a little bit taller. I didn't know what the finished length was and I do like my jackets hitting the mid hip rather than hitting the full hip covering my bottom. But length is always a personal preference. This is just what I like. Here's another casual outfit, but with a little bit of effort with some dark gray denim pants. These are joggers, they're very comfortable. I have some gray heels and a gray bag because I like matching those things and the same black cami as before. And the jacket, of course, adds all the extra that this outfit needs so that it's not that basic. I really, really love this print. It was a great choice for me and I know I'm gonna be able to wear it many other ways because I see this gray leopard print as a neutral. So I could choose other solid colors to go with this for sure. I really love it. If you look at a jacket like this and just take it step by step, you realize it's just a bunch of straight seams, just a few more of them, and actually less than other jackets I've made. I think this is quite doable if you've made a few garments before, if you just follow along, you'll definitely be able to make something like this. I would love to have another one in a green, 100% linen, 
I have the fabric. It was really hard for me to choose between the green and the navy, but I ended up choosing the navy just because I love navy. And yeah, I highly recommend the jacket. It's really nice. You can make it look however you want it to look. The look is so different with whatever fabric you choose. And I would just go in and put all the pockets. I really like them, but if you don't want to, you can just put some of them or none of them. I think what could take you a little bit longer is constructing the sleeve. It's not difficult at all. Have a look at the video where I showed you in detail. They won't be daunting at all. Don't worry if it's, if it's a two-piece sleeve. It's actually so much better in the fit. So when I see them, I'm really happy because I know that it's gonna fit so much better than a one-piece sleeve. So it's totally worth having that feature there. Don't forget to grab your Delaware jacket pattern. If you like a style like this through the 6th of May, it'll be 20% off. Find my affiliate link in the description box and also in the pinned comment so it's easy to find. And I will see you again very soon with more sewing. I have a really special something to show you next week. So stay tuned. See you soon. Bye.